Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. Hi, I'm taking this from a cable car going up to the Great Wall in China. Behind us we have rolling green hills and behind that we have, well, a lot of smog. Great place to start our talk about externalities. A lot of pollution around Beijing comes from burning coal for electricity generation. So in this talk, we're going to look at an example of a negative externality and we're going to focus on the pollution that comes from, for example, burning coal for electricity generation. We're going to assume that this is a negative externality in production. So that means that the private marginal cost of producing electricity, which doesn't include the cost of pollution, will be below the social marginal cost of producing electricity because the social marginal cost will include the social cost of the pollution. Let's look at the electricity market. On the vertical axis we have dollars, we have the price, dollars per megawatt hour, and on the horizontal axis we have the quantity of electricity. We've got our demand curve for electricity, this downward sloping green line, as usual, the demand curve will be the marginal private value curve. And because we're going to consider the externality on the production side, not the consumption side, that means that the demand curve is also the marginal social value curve. There's no externality on the demand side, so demand is marginal private value is marginal social value. And we also have our supply curve for electricity, that's the upward sloping green line here. And as usual, our supply curve will be our marginal private cost curve. It's the marginal cost of the private producers of electricity. But because we have an externality in the supply of electricity, our supply curve will not be the marginal social cost curve. The marginal social cost will differ from the marginal private cost because of the externality. So now our blue upward sloping line, given here, which lies above the supply curve, includes our externality. It's our marginal social cost curve. What does this mean? Well remember, the height of the supply curve is the marginal private cost of producing an extra megawatt hour of electricity. And the gap between the green and the blue lines represents the external, the marginal external cost of producing that megawatt hour of electricity. So the total social cost of producing a particular quantity, a particular unit of electricity is the private cost plus the marginal external cost giving the total marginal social cost of that unit of electricity the height of the marginal social cost curve. Now, notice that as we've drawn it here, that as we produce more electricity, the marginal private cost of each extra unit of electricity increases. That's what we normally expect. Marginal private costs increase as you produce more electricity. But notice also that the external pollution cost is increasing. The gap between the supply curve and the marginal social cost curve is getting bigger in our diagram. So the marginal pollution cost of each extra unit of electricity is bigger than the external cost of the one before. Or in other words, the gap between our marginal private cost and our marginal social cost is rising as we've drawn it here, that not only means that producing another unit of electricity creates a negative externality from pollution, but it means that the negative cost of pollution increases at an increasing rate as we produce more electricity. So let's now see what the effect of the externality is on our socially optimal outcome and compare that to our market outcome. Well, our market outcome, as usual, is where the demand curve intersects with the supply curve. We will have a price of P market and a quantity of Q market, as normal. 
What about for our socially optimal level of electricity generation? Well, that's going to be where the marginal social cost of an extra unit of electricity is equal to the marginal social value of an extra unit of electricity. So that's where our marginal social value curve intersects our marginal social cost curve. And that's the quantity Q star. Notice what is happening here. From the perspective of society, we end up with too much electricity being produced in a perfectly competitive electricity market. The perfectly competitive electricity market does not take into account the negative external social cost of pollution. And so when individual buyers and individual sellers meet, they tend to create and trade too much electricity. So to get to the social optimum, we would need to somehow restrict electricity trade back here to Q star. An important thing to point out, while the market left to its own devices will tend to overproduce electricity when we have a negative externality, the presence of a negative externality does not mean we want to eliminate the product. For example, take a unit of electricity back here to the left of Q star. Notice that for that unit of electricity, the marginal social value is given by the height of the marginal social value curve. That is greater than the marginal social cost of that electricity, even when we take into account the pollution cost. Remember, the blue marginal social cost curve includes the external pollution cost. So for this unit to the left of Q star, the marginal social cost, including pollution, is less than the marginal social value. So from an economic perspective, we want that unit of electricity produced and consumed even though it creates some pollution. We want to optimise or stop the trade of electricity at the point where the marginal social cost and the marginal social value are the same. The marginal social cost including the pollution cost and the marginal social value. So just because you've got an externality, a negative externality, doesn't mean we should be banning electricity. What it means is we need to think about how do we get the right amount of electricity from the market. The market by itself will produce too much, but how do we get Q star? That issue of how do we give the right incentive to the market to produce Q star to take into account the cost of pollution is going to be a major part of our next few presentations. But for the moment, let's sum up by noting that when there's a negative externality, trade in a perfectly competitive market leads to too much of a good or service being traded from a social perspective. And we refer to this as a situation or a case of market failure. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again in my next presentation.